So we had the DisplayLink booth here, and uh, who are you? Andy Davis, Director of Marketing from DisplayLink. So here we see, uh, he has a HTC Vive, but there's no cable. There's no cable at all. Cabling just doesn't work with the HTC Vive. The problem is today, if you're attached by a cable, it's impossible to be immersed. So what we've done is we've removed the cable, we've viewed our technology, and we've enabled you to be completely wireless. So here we are looking at the actual solution. Yeah. So the HTC Vive normally is connected here at the front of the device with HDMI and USB. And what we've done is we've interfaced into that at the back here with the module. This is a concept module. You can see the DisplayNix logo on the back, and we've integrated our one of our docking chips, but also 60 gigahertz antenna. So what's happening is we're going live from a gaming PC, wirelessly through the air to the HTC Vive, via DisplayLink, DisplayLink compression and software running over the wireless link over 60 gigahertz, so you can be totally wire free. You can run around in circles, you can dodge, you can jump, you can roll around, do whatever you need to do. And the latency is so low, you could even juggle with the controllers and see it live when you're in a Vive session. And the 60 gigahertz is the full bandwidth of HDMI, no? It's a high gigabit 60 gigahertz rate. gives you more than enough, because the reason is, displaying it, we're known for 15 years with all of our compression software. I mean, I was going to show you in just a second, we're doing 6 4K over a single USB 3 Gen 1 connection. So right here, what you can yeah. see, you see these six monitors in front of me. All of these six monitors are 3840 by 2160. Yeah. Connected in from this little Dell XPS. So this Dell XPS, one connector, one connector, one cable. This is USB Type C, but that's yeah. only USB 3 Gen 1, 5 gig per second. And the reality is, what you can see here is that single connection is coming out to this first docking station. Yeah. That docking station is driving two display port connectors right here. Maybe that's not enough, maybe you want more. We can daisy chain USB A. So we're going through hubs with graphics. Can't do that with other technologies. Through hubs into the second dock. Another two 4K displays. Again into a third dock. Three docks exactly the same, and that's giving us six. 3840 by 2160, P60, 4K display. That's more than 8K. 8K is just 4. We're way beyond 8K. You're like 10K or something. Dude, it's, it's more huge. than enough. It's huge. Uh, so, uh, th this is, uh, this planning is quite popular for this dock market, right? Docking stations, core technology areas. And here we see one of them, for example. Yeah, this is one of the launched products. Sorry. So, this is a Targus product. This is using our DL6950 chip. The chip that's here is exactly the same chip that's actually driving the 64K. So, this is launched in the market today. This is a Targus Dock 160. If you were to put three of these back to back, you'd have that 64K. The same function. And uh, there it has two 4Ks here? That's two 4K P60, exactly. Uh, how much uh, overhead is on the Windows computer when you do this functionality? Very, very little. Because the way we've actually designed the codec, if you're not moving any content at all, there's actually nothing happening. So it's super low latency, it's dynamic compression. So we can go from nothing through to different levels of compression based on what we need. And what are you showing over here? Ultimate universality for IT. What is exactly. that about? So here we have a desk set up. This is a float desk, can go up and down. You may see these in trader environments, but these are more and more popular. Yeah. Driving two displays here behind me. What we've got on the desk there is a device from HumanScape. Yeah. This is actually an integrated dock stand solution. So if I open this up, you can actually see it's a beautiful stand in here. That stand at the base actually has a docking station which integrates DisplayX chipset. Now, that's fantastic for people who want to provision desktops, but provisioning desktops can be a real nightmare these days for IT because BYOD, everyone's coming in with their own devices. So behind me to the right, you'll see what I call the Wheel of Fortune 500. We wouldn't be in Vegas if we didn't have a Wheel of Fortune at CES. Fortune 500 is where we play. So you'll see here we have a Mac OS with a Type-C connector. We have an LG mobile phone with a micro USB connector. We have an HP tablet driving over a USB-A connector. We have a Chromebook down here. To the right of that, Windows 10, an Android tablet, Windows 7, Ubuntu Linux. And we've wired all of these to the desk, which is where all these cables are. So what this means is that anyone can pick up a cable and just plug in. Now what this means for hot desking is any device can plug into one of our docking station solutions. So any platform, any OS, any architecture. That's amazing. So basically on all these you run your app, right? It's just your app. 
it's either our app. It's, it's our app on, on Android, for example. It's a driver on Windows. On Chrome, actually, Google's completely embedded us from R51 onwards in the operating system. So, but yes, it's just software running on these solutions. Which version of Chrome have you embedded? From R51, from release 51 onwards, we're embedded on the platforms. Which is awesome. It's absolutely fantastic. It's totally plug and play. Every Chrome in the whole world. Exactly. At least updated 51, but they all are. From 51 and beyond, everybody updates. So the beautiful thing about that, you don't have to worry about software. You open it up, and it's just native. It just works. And uh, it's just a USB, right? It's just USB. So every device in the world has USB. Uh, this it is USB matter. Type C. This, this one. is Type C, but it's Type C. It's Type A. It's micro connector. Everything works. Any of the USB plugs that you have on these, these computers? If it's USB, it's USB. We work. And you run as a driver on Mac, or? Yes, on the Mac, it's a software driver. It's a free download from our operating set from our website. On Windows, it's a it's a download. Windows 10. Things have changed a little bit. In Anniversary Edition, we've worked really closely with Microsoft to be able to have much tighter link functionality from Windows 10 Anniversary Edition onwards. In fact, if we look behind me here, what we have here is that same Windows 10 architecture. This is one core from Microsoft. And what you're seeing is we've got a Microsoft mobile phone connecting into a Hewlett Packard docking station. So this docking station has a captive cable, but that's USB Type-C. You see this is actually charging the phone at the same point in time it's been connected out with DisplayPort. Now this is actually running a live presentation. But the coolest thing in the world, that one core driver, that work that we've been doing on Windows 10, this now becomes the touch screen. So I can use this and I'm controlling the mouse here. So this is now the interface. So any um, any display link dock any is a dock for continuum? Any display link dock. It's as simple as that. So if you've already got a docking station and then you get a Microsoft phone continuum, you can reuse that, plug it in, and you're just good to go. I think continuum is the coolest thing Microsoft has done in the last 20 years. You know, Microsoft's making huge progress. Things are going really, really well. We're really happy to be a partner, and we're getting deeper and deeper with those guys. Some fantastic stuff going forwards. So over here, this is one of the new solutions for connectivity. So what you actually see here is we've got a Dell XPS, and we've modified this XPS. So take a normal XPS. What we've done is we've actually built a device onto the bottom. And you see this, normally this would be embedded within the laptop itself. So this is a snap, yeah, this little chips from Lattice, it's called Snap. It's a 60 gigahertz close proximity antenna. So we've got one here and we've got one in this docking station. And we've left it outside. Normally this would be embedded so it can go through the case and we're only connecting via USB. So the beauty of this is when you walk up, you literally just put it down, drop it into the connector and what will happen, you see it's recognized and behind me, dual 4K, P60, 3840 by 2160 lights up, and we're good to go here at the desktop. Nice. So Display Link is um, awesome, awesome technology, right? I how think so. You, how, who invented this, and how did it start? So the technology actually started about 15 years ago, and our founders looked at the technology in the market and said, you know what we need to do, the last frontier really is networking displays. And really what we did was we started with a compression technology. And that compression technology, we wanted to work agnostically across any connector. We actually started looking at Ethernet networking. We moved into USB, which is the most predominantly used connector across the world. Of, of course, a natural progression of that was into wireless. So we have wireless 11AC, we have wireless 11AD on docking station solutions, 60 gigahertz as the next progression going forward. And of course, it's 60 gigahertz that we're running on the, uh, on the wireless VR back behind us. So your company sounds a little bit like the Silicon Valley TV show, right? <laughs> Other than everything works really well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But is, is, is that the atmosphere in the office? So the atmosphere is fantastic. I've got to say, we just moved to a new location in, in Cambridge. We're on the Science Park. It's We've, a bunch of geeks uh, compressing it's, stuff. It's a bunch of rocket scientists doing amazing stuff that's going to change the world going forward. I love it, I've got to say. It puts an exciting face every time we go to work. It's a fun place to work. We're doing amazing stuff. A year ago, people would have said to us, VR, really? Aren't you the enterprise docking guys? And in fact, here we are a year later, running mixed reality VR with a green screen background, 
live here at CES on the show floor with an HTC Vive, which everyone's going crazy about. Running gaming, we're known for more enterprise solutions, but the reality is, you know, someone said to me yesterday, why can we do this? Well, we can. We've got the technology that can enable this. And this is just the beginning. This is concept. We're scratching the surface. There's so much more we can do. Nobody else is doing wireless HTC Vive. There's a couple of people trying to do things. We're all doing them a little differently. We think the best thing we've got, we can scale hugely. I mean, you've seen us doing six 4K behind me here. We don't think there's limitations going forward. There's huge opportunities. This market's exploding right now. We're happy to be right at the beginning of it. And you do everything over USB. You don't need HDMI. You don't well, need. So, uh... so we can connect to standard connectors. So USB is just a transport that enables us to connect into a host. But behind that, we can connect standard uh, monitor technology, whether it be HDMI, whether it be DisplayPort, whether it's the old legacy VGA. Really, that doesn't matter to us at all. It's all about providing the best connectivity solutions and the best user experience. So you provide free app on Android. Uh, there's, people can download on the Google Play Store right now? Exactly. For Android mobile phones, we have a free app. It's up on the Android mobile store, so please go ahead and download that. And then if, you, if your phone is a uh, host? The right? phone, that, that means the phone, so the phone will have to have USB host yeah. mode. Most of, the, most of the new high-end phones, they do have that. But you can download the app, and if you've got one of our docking stations or one of our adapter products, you can just plug that into the USB port, connect that to a monitor, and you're good to go. So if you're not in that market, and I know Charbax, a lot of your customers and your user base are all mobile friendly guys, go ahead and download that app from the App Store right now. Just go up to Google, type in display link, you'll see the app. Download that, get it on the phone, and you're, you're connected straight away. And, and let me just say, that same dock that you've bought, or that same adapter, that'll still work with Windows, it'll still work with Chrome, it'll still work with all the guys we saw behind us. Continuum? Continuum, yeah, absolute flexibility. That means future-proof, what does it mean? Backwards, what does it mean? So backwards, you have different versions of all this stuff, no? Well, so here's the thing, backwards and forwards compatibility mean a lot of things to different people, but from us, you know, the connectors keep changing, right? So a lot of people have now got USB Type-C, everyone's raving about it, but if you've got a Type-A platform, what happens? Do you have to throw away your dock installation? Do you have to throw away your solution? Not with us. You can have a Type-C host PC. You can connect into a Type-B dock. You can have a micro connector on a phone. You can connect into one of our docks. Whether it's a Type-C dock or whether it's a Type-A dock or a Type-B dock, it doesn't matter. For us, we use three words, it just works. So it's free on Android, it's a free driver on Windows, free driver on Mac, uh, free on uh, all these devices. Yep, so and pre-installed on Chrome. Is, uh, you, you sell the little uh, chip that goes in the dock, We're right? We're a chip and software company. So there's a chip that goes in the docking station solution. We provide that out, so we work with all the leading PC OEMs today. At the same point in time, we work with the accessory companies like Targus. So you'll see products like Dell, Lenovo, Hewlett Packard, Targus, all these guys are enabling, enabled with our solution. And then uh, uh, it's, it could be in the displays also. How many displays ship with displays? Absolutely. So there's a lot of people did portable displays. People really wanted, you know, a lot of people like yourself are on the road all the time, same as me, little portable displays. So we worked with people like AOC. We worked with people like Assistec. We have those little 15-inch panels. You know, it's the same size as your notebook. You can throw it in your bag, and it's just bus-powered. And this is mind-blowing. So you can have a 1080p display that's bus-powered, plug it into your laptop, carry it with you, just goes into your laptop bag, plug it in on the road, and you've got a second display. And it's all about productivity, right? So the key thing here is, we all know, if you can see more data, you can be more productive. And that's what we're enabling at display. Link. Nice, so uh, there's a lot of uh, potential right here. Huge and, potential. And uh, you live in uh, Taiwan, right? I live in Taiwan, so, so we're what are dispersed you doing all over the world. So. From Taiwan, you know, a lot of our customers build products in Asia, a lot of our customers are based in Asia. I think we all know Asia is one of the fastest environment, moving environments in the world. So I'm, I'm based right in the center of that. But we also have offices all over the world. And Cambridge Company, that's where ARM is. Exactly. So exactly. is that where it started? You know, it's the UK Silicon Valley, right? So are we have ex-ARM employees or not? We have a few, we have some, you know, there's a, there's a huge amount of talent pool there. We're very proud to say we hire a whole bunch of fantastic engineering. You know, we couldn't do this stuff behind us without those great engineers behind us. And everyone's thrilled to be able to develop this technology. So over the last few years, I've been uh, doing videos about MHL, about Slimport and stuff like that. This is something else, right? This spans beyond where all of those were. So you, you know, connectors again, they keep changing. For us, it doesn't matter. You know, all of MHL, you know, you don't see that on so many mobile phones right now going forward. What you do see is USB. Why? 
because it's just everywhere. It's, it's the most used connector in the world. And we've now just doubled, we've gone from USB 3.1 Gen 1, USB 3.1 Gen 2, up to 10 gig per second. You know, the 6 4K demo that you saw behind me, that's just Gen 1, 5 gig per second. So you can imagine, as that doubles going forwards, things just get amazing. So we don't see a limitation to this at all, but we're not limited just by USB. We can work in Wi-Fi, we can work in wide gig, we can work in the 60 gigahertz spectrum, 11 AC. To us, we've built that codec environment to be totally agnostic. What's your codec? It's not H.265, it's not VP9, it's, it's something uh, else. It's pixie dust. It's <laughs> it's the it is the secret source. So what we've done is we've built up from scratch. You know, we looked at all the standards. We looked at everything that was out there that could do compression. And we analyzed them all and we said, these just don't tick all the boxes. If you want crystal clear, clear text, and you want super low latency, and you want the best graphics capable, and you want motion that's amazing for things like gaming that we're doing behind us, there wasn't any single codec that could do that. So we created one from scratch with our great engineers. We've been evolving that over time, for, even for VR. We haven't thrown that away and started again. It's all about building blocks, building on everything we have. So to my, you know, to your right behind me, we have Enterprise Solutions. We've built on that to do what's behind me with VR. Do you VR. have some of those Pixie Dust engineers right here? We have some of those Pixie Dust engineers okay. right now. Okay. I can't point them out. It's super secret, secret, secret you know? Secret guy. I'd like to know what the secret but sauce We like is. to bring them on the road with us. And why? Because the reality is they see these amount of people here. They see the interest. That gives them a kick. We like them to partake in the enjoyment of you know all the work that they're doing, and and this this is incredible what's happening. Yeah, it's here not at okay CS. if they do all the awesome work and you're the marketing guys having fun in Las Vegas. They, they need to enjoy it too, right? They need to see what the customer feedback is, what the asks are, what the wants are, what the needs are, what the industry is doing. So we bring them out here with us as well. So your new headquarters in uh, Cambridge. So I guess the future of DisplayLink is going to go up. Absolutely. We're going, from, we're, we're going from strength to strength. We are now Cambridge CSP 140, which is Cambridge Science Park. Uh, we have this beautiful new building. We've actually built that building for creativity, to foster creativity. The entire side inside of that building, when you walk in there, will just blow your mind because we've built that entire area. You know, the management team put together concepts of what's going to foster creativity, what's going to foster co-working. So we've encompassed some great ways of working, some great ways of interaction, and we've built that offices around it. And this is what's happening behind us, you know, this is just incredible. Cool, awesome, I'm looking forward to this year. Ciao back to me too. And the next year, and Absolutely. it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun future. Thanks for coming by.